You know, we're in the middle of the war, in the middle of the Third World War. It's taking place in Ukraine right now. And it's a war that a lot of people are not even aware what this war is about. So I decided I'm going to video record this video. Uh, it's the issues uh, about in respect to this war that involve my stay in the United States of America since 1995 for 11 and a half consecutive years. I would not go from the U.S. I would stay... Uh, but I was distributed all over the world and met so many different all kinds of people and this did not stop with my return back to the U.S. for a year and a half. All that doesn't matter. But involving number of people uh, and from the U.S. and from Europe, from Eastern, Western, Asia, uh, South America, Africa, Australia, you name it, from all the continents, uh, strange, strange mixture of people, people with all backgrounds you possibly can imagine, with, of course, different interests uh, they implicated in this case. And there was, um, I got a feeling that a lot of people still does not understand uh, what this war today in 2022 on people of Ukraine, again, uh, is all about. So I decided I will video record this stuff so that people, you people from the West foremost, uh, will understand what, what this war on people of Ukraine is all about. Like, for instance, I got a real shocker today and it's something that actually prompted me to go and complete this video in this excerpt here you can hear Mr. Stoltenberg this is a NATO secretary and um, he's got some interesting things to say in respect to all this Oh, we know that the midterms... Jens Stoltenberg, welcome to the program. Because it is in from the ground. Sure, there have been that act. Okay, uh, Mr. Stoltenberg, I, I don't get this, this video. This, this was a video on the Yahoo, basically. Um, he is pleased, right? He is pleased that uh, something at least was done in respect to Ukraine, that Ukraine got... Um, it's city Kherson back that's a nice thing to hear but then again um, yeah that this this exact this precisely is the video that in today today ladies Most and gentlemen wars end at some stage today is November the 14 2022 most so, wars end at some stage uh, around the negotiating table, but what happens around that table is uh, fundamentally uh, linked to uh, the situation uh, on the battlefield. Okay, so Mr. Stoltenberg is talking about the war ending in Ukraine. Okay, uh, this is very, 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 very prematurely talking about uh, war ending when enormous amount of Ukraine is totally occupied. Um, the winter is coming and I found this issue rather than completely accommodating Ukraine to the best of your abilities. In fact, just as I published yesterday here uh, on the new side, the Also Times, I find this quite, quite, quite incredible. Uh, there are actually calls here that popped up on a table in Moscow. Uh, people walking around, protesting, uh, eventually demanding from Putin to launch nukes on Washington DC, which I'm sure you understand this is located in the United States of America, right? Um, I, I find this difficult to believe, 
that such is somehow doesn't open this thing. I don't know how, why. I find it difficult to believe that such opportunity is being wasted on calls to negotiation table, reminding people of sharp winter. Um, this is bullshit. <laughs> This is uh, this is basically taken from anthem from the Soviet anthem, present Russian anthem. It's exactly what it is. Okay, drop the nukes on 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 a Washington D.C. Okay, so. Where the hell are we going with this kind of stuff? Where where are we heading with this shit? Um, I don't. I I'm not happy with 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 this speech, Mr. Stoltenberg. I'm gonna tell you, I'm not happy with you. I called yesterday clearly because of, especially because of this thing here, because of calls to nuke Washington D.C. Uh, I I I called instead for. And NATO troops to move into Ukraine and get one liberated. This is the opportunity to take a step forward. Uh, this is not your partner. This is not your ally. And this is yet another Russian war on Europe. This isn't about Ukraine only. You understand why this video? This video also because of ignorance that have created this war, war. It's a tremendous, tremendous ignorance that tr that created this war. Ukraine is pro-European country, nation. People of Ukraine strive toward European Union membership. People of Ukraine would love to build with American people future not only with American people, but with the German people, with a Japanese people, with French people, with Italian people. They want to be part of something like this. They want to be part of the European Union. They want to be part of the NATO. Additional NATO member just is something that adds to security of the people of Europe, European continent overall, contributes stability of the European Union uh, European continent, however, contributes to stability of the world, which I'm sure you are all aware of it. So I'm not happy that the NATO planes, which posed with the troops on the borders with Ukraine, did not take additional step, but they rather refer to us, if I go back to Mr. Stoltenberg. So what we should do is to support Ukraine to strengthen strength their, their hand, hand so at some, some stage there, there can be negotiations, negotiations where Ukraine uh, prevails as an independent sovereign nation uh, in Europe. It's, it's for Ukraine to decide, it's them to pay, to pay uh, to, they, they are paying now the highest price uh, in, 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 in terms, terms of lost lives and, uh, and damage to the country. So it's for Ukraine to decide uh, what the kind of terms that are acceptable uh, for them. It's for us uh, to support them and uh, mark, maximize the likelihood for uh, an acceptable uh, outcome. Russia's withdrawal from Hudson demonstrates uh, the incredible courage of the Ukrainian armed forces. But it also shows the importance of our continued support to Ukraine. I I am thankful to this man. I think he does a good, I think he did a great job. If I possibly could, I would get him as a secretary, NATO secretary again. I think he is the most qualified for that, but I gotta give him a little pressure behind uh, because it's people that are pressuring him. I know he wants to do his job best to his abilities, but as I stated, there is a lobby there is a Vladimir Putin's lobby in the West that are breaking his balls. You should not uh, make the mistake of underestimating Russia. 
the Russian armed forces retain significant capabilities as well as a large... You see, I don't like the idea about what he is saying right now because of what I stated earlier here. This is not the time to waste. This is rather to use the opportunity. This is rather the opportunity to ensure stability of the European Union, of the European, uh, of the European continent. This is the chance. This is the time. If this time is missed, hardly you will find to justify um, what should never ever be negotiable in the first place. Uh, calls to nuke Washington DC, which is not even bordered with Russia anywhere other than through the waters of Alaska. Um, this is just uh, clearly demonstrating the willingness of something that hunted European Union, uh, as a matter of fact, excuse me, European states since ages. Uh, to understand Russia uh, is to understand today's Russian war in Ukraine is to understand the World War II. It's to understand the wars in Europe that whatever bring about those wars, whatever made those wars surface throughout the Europe, uh, it's, it's, it's a whole a lot more than just about, if that's not enough, the biggest European country known as Ukraine. Uh, Mr. Stoltenberg ends his speech here with, you know, it's what you're going to get idea. Uh, as he already initiated, it's about the depending on the people of Ukraine. Yeah, uh, it really, 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 this isn't only about Ukraine. This is about entire world. It definitely is about people in France, in Germany, in Italy, in Scandinavia, in Britain, in Spain. Number of truths. Thank the coming months will be difficult. Putin's aim is to leave Ukraine cold and dark this winter. So we must stay the course. Uh, basically, I would say to Mr. Stoltenberg, you are going to have what I stated in terms of end economic security and security as whole well, stability, military, military stability in Europe as much as Ukraine you are going to liberate the war on the people of Ukraine and this is believe me the liberal choice of my words this is no coincidence. I choose the words for people of the world to understand this issue. Did not start it in 2022. The war on people of Ukraine did not start it in 2014. Yeah, I'm sure that you heard about the Donetsk. I'm sure that you heard about, um, you know, you heard about 2014 Crimea, uh, Donetsk. Russian occupation, uh, but, and I'm sure that um, you heard there was some disputes in the past between Ukrainian people, people of Ukraine, and the people, uh, Russian people, and so on and so forth. Uh, but, you know, most of you, till you're going to see this video, do not even understand what this war is all about. Maybe Mr. Stoltenberg, once he's going to see this,
video will understand my words because I'm saying to him liberate when he comes to Ukraine as much as you possibly can liberate and as far as I'm concerned you can set a new border of Ukraine along the Volga River along the Caspian Sea because this thing here that you see here this is what the Ukraine was this is the postcard from 100 years ago where you can see Ukraine was at least about twice as big as it is today Russians never ever had do you understand my words the words I'm saying to you Europeans I'm talking about Italians French Spaniards British Germans Scandinavians Norwegians Mr. Stoltenberg not only Finnish people of Finland and of course the people Baltic Baltic Sea are completely aware of this Russians never had absolutely have never had any access to either Black Sea or Caspian Lake Sea whatever you want to call one let me demonstrate you this is huge 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 perhaps even news for you but I'm telling you and it's kind of crazy isn't it because you remember about Azov Battalion how the Azov Battalion the Ukrainian battalion that was branded as a neo-nazi battalion uh, fought for the Mariupol yeah I'm sure you remember uh, look at look at this folks this here this is a Caspian Sea uh, this is this here that you see this is a Black Sea and what you see here this here enclosure this thing here this is called the Sea of Azo and this thing here far away from Ukraine now this is called Caspian Sea but the thing is that the Russians never were here the thing is that the Russians never were anywhere along the Black Sea ah uh, so this video this is a father this is a mother of the European wars uh, actually of the wars in Europe this is a true this is actually what created Adolf Hitler yeah I know a lot of you have seen this here Putin Hitler if you go if you google this Putin Hitler and what is it you get you get this image here and you're gonna see this thing here right it's it's a Putin Putin is a Hitler uh, this is who created uh, Putin right no 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 it's actually Putin that created Adolf Hitler it was not Hitler that created Vladimir Putin it was Joseph Stalin and it was people before Joseph Stalin who launched madness on Europe they released the words anywhere from Finland uh, all the way to Caucasus states and wars on Baltic states uh, and on Poland and on everybody wherever the Russia bordered that's what it turned into a Soviet Union now the Soviet Union was indifferent from a so-called Yugoslavia you got to understand ladies and gentlemen what this war is all about that's why I'm video recording this stuff because most of you did not understood anything about me when I came to the United States in 95 despite mass genocide that went on and in Bosnia and in Croatia now we're gonna choose this here this is this is a capital Sarajevo in Pristina throughout Albania it was killing it was a mass killing it was ethnic cleansing that went on on a mass scale Yet when I came to the United States, nobody understood what the hell went on. And you, you see all this? North Macedonia, Serbia, Kosovo, Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Slovenia. All this used to be known as a Federation of the Yugoslav Republic. But the one 
in whose name this federation existed was actually a greater Serbian Chetnik state known really as Yugoslavia as all these other little states that you see around Serbia and you don't even get to see when I say around Serbia because Serbs expanded to the territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina existed only for one purpose and that's basically to serve self annihilate self exterminate you know this is a brutal truth about this picture here about who created whom who is who who is what you should understand that war on ukraine is not since 2014 the war in ukraine is over 100 years old there was no russians on either black sea there was no russians on a caspian sea now let me demonstrate you this so i'm gonna say to you mr stoltenberg to please continue to support ukraine do best to your abilities to help the people of ukraine and with which i know you do with your efforts contribute of course to european security stability of the world europe and of the world safety this is what situation looks for ukraine today so the russians pretty much went from non-existence on a black sea non-existence on a caspian sea into a complete domination of ukrainian coast as whole now how the hell this came about what exactly happened here what exactly what the hell is this about what is this going on you see this is a small victory for ukrainian people uh kherson um which i hope it's gonna it's gonna lead to something else as far as the ukraine and as i say i hope it stops along the volga river right where volgograd is if you only can if you only could trust me all the cities located on the russian side all of them all of them used to belong to the people of ukraine this all this all this here this was all ukraine if you would take the entire region from krasnodar stevropol rostov and don all the way to astrahan and volgograd all this if you would do you wouldn't cause uh, you wouldn't cause any kind of uh, injustice to the russian people and furthermore the russian people would live in peace and prosperity in a pro democratic pro european stable oriented toward prosperity country rather than complete insanity they are in at right now at this point in time the russian people that refuse to engage in war volgograd used to be a ukrainian city ladies and gentlemen you see the volgograd this used to be ukraine this is ukrainian city refusing to go in the war against people of ukraine results in bullets they murder they kill their own people for refusing to go in war against ukrainian people for whom however they claim russians they are brothers that they are slavic brothers and a little earlier i mentioned to you i said how the hell this happened how did the russians made it all the way to the black sea and all the way to the caspian sea well foremost this here is the kazakhstan here this is not what russia was this is a kazakhstan and on this side here is ukraine and this this is what this is who bordered on a caspian sea these are the rightful owners of the caspian sea and these are 
this is the rightful owner of Russian, what is located in the Russian territory and on Ukrainian territory. This is the rightful owner, the real owner of the Black Sea coast. You get it? So how the hell this stuff happened? Well, this stuff happened through what was known as a Holodomor. I'm sure that you guys know about the Holodomor, that you have heard about the Holodomor. Uh, to be more precise about this stuff, this stuff happened exactly through the Slavic Brotherhood lie. Holodomor is this. This is what the Slavic Brotherhood looks like. Uh, there was some video on a YouTube. Um, it's actually a video I'm going to post below that, that they, um, it's really nice, this, 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 um, idea about the Slavic Brotherhood solidarity, basically, how the Slavic people step together and they basically help one another through the struggle, through the hard times, uh, in war against, uh, you know, different powers since from forever, uh, but nobody wants to talk who the Slavic people are. The Slavic people, through my eyes, are Serbs located on the Balkans and the Russians. And then when it comes to a Slavic people, then that's just a blank, that's just a dark peach, night dark. Uh, that's what I would want you to imagine, a curtain that hugs you. This is what the Soviet Union was. This is what the Federation of the Yugoslav Republic was. And it hugs you. And then the only thing that happens is you see the smoke um, coming out of that, out of that coat, out of that curtain. And abracadabra, you no longer exist, whoever you are. You are turned into ashes. You are actually starved to death in your country. Uh, you are the one who was used as a bridge on the pretense of Slavic Brotherhood for the Russians to access a Black Sea, a Caspian Sea, because this is what happened. Oh, you are our brothers. You're our brothers, uh, our Ukrainian brothers, okay, all right, we are Ruski, we are your brother, we help you, we protect you, we are what the fuck, I don't know what. You know, you are I, I am you, we are we, we are big Slavic Union, we, we, we the Slavic, we the Slavs, yeah? So, Ruski came and the Ukrainski perished. This here, this, bones. This thing that you see here, bones. This is what you become. You understand? You're fucking guilty. I'm going to tell you to American people about this stuff here. You're fucking guilty because you're born. Not because what you did. You understand? Because you couldn't understand the Balkan Wars. You couldn't understand the Serbian War which Serbia launched and on the people of the Kosovo, they launched the war on the first it was on the people of Kosovo. Those are actually Albanian people. This here. They wanted to exterminate everybody. There. Okay? And a Vojvodina, there was extermination of the Hungarian minority, big time. Which was a very, very for quite some time, all this here that you see here in the north of the Serbia, this is called the same, it was the same like in a Kosovo. It was, it had almost a status of the independent republic. So you need to understand this stuff. Because a lot of you don't understand anything. They, you're talking, you're simplifying something and I'm going to tell you, those of you who simplified, you created this war that we see today is taking place. This atrocity, which turned 14 million Ukrainian people into homeless bums now. And costed numerous people of lives. You see, this is what Yugoslavia used to be. It's the same thing. 
The Serbia is where you see right there. That's a Serbia for you to understand. The Serbia is a little bit bigger than what Serbia used to be, but that's a Serbia. On the north, what also now is Serbia is Vojvodina. This is the region where Serbs have ethnically cleansed out Hungarian neighbor. Yeah, you see this here? Hungary is up north from Serbia. Vojvodina used to be heavily populated with a Hungarian minority. They were wiped out by the Serbs in this great kingdom of SHS, kingdom of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs. Kingdom which was formed to protect indigenous uh, rights uh, of the nations which however became parts of yeah you could say parts of uh, foreign also powers such as Austria um, Hungary Italy in case of uh, Slovenia and Croatia that is true I'm not denying this kind of stuff and it was this kind of issues that people in Croatia and in Slovenia just like the people in Ukraine begun to completely disregard basically turning their back to yet the worst enemy out there that hunted them for a very 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 long time and did some really 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 nasty stuff decimated them basically more than anybody else did So the war on the Balkans started with Serbs exterminating people in the Kosovo. Um, and then announcing a protest, a big assembly, a meeting. It was called the Meeting of the True in Ljubljana. Uh, which was known as a meeting of one million Serbs in Ljubljana, therefore in Slovenia. Just for you to understand, Slovenia doesn't have more than two million people. So if you bring in the country one million Serbs on the buses with the cars they come on a meeting, you could, you can, you can obviously you can say that Slovenia no longer exists, right? Um, Slovenian people were not too thrilled about this meeting. This meeting had a lot of violent uh, platform because in this meeting also was announced that Slovenian people are going to be wiped out, exterminated from the face of earth. So, whatever the hell you are, you probably will not look forward to that prospect. Yeah? Uh, the war exploded second to Kosovo, the war exploded in Slovenia. So the Serbs now already had a war with uh, two republics, practically. Slovenia, Kosovo. The third, that also couldn't last for too long, the Serbs launched war on Croatia. So now they were already in a war with the three countries. The Bosnian people still didn't know what the hell goes on. They paid the biggest price for that matter because that was the fourth place and it was also who paid the highest price people of Bosnia and Herzegovina were decimated they suffered as the fourth one so they simultaneously engaged against four republics and so when I came to United States of America and I have found certain portions of the populations talking about mostly here a lot about American Democrats siding with extermination with a genocide against uh, I don't know few states because the Serbs had a politic the, the politic was very very brilliant they involved people from abroad they involved people from Africa and it was all in the name of uh, anti-Nazism. It was all in the name of anti-fascism. Okay, so now you get to kill people as much as you want the way you like using, doing whatever the fuck you want and you got the support of the world. It's cool. You know why it's cool? Because Croatia used to be 
self-identified self as an axis of evil collaborator during the World War II. And so, in a lot of people's minds, Soviet Union as well as Yugoslavia uh, were just existed out there for the sake of prevention so that it would not come uh, to the Third World War so that the humanity would not have to face again the evils of the past and Nazism. And Nazism was a big deal and Nazism was everything in the world. People disregarded that the Soviet Union declared war on Finland way before the World War II. People completely disregarded the fact. People people disregarded the fact about the Winter War. People don't know anything about the war, about the Winter War, how the Soviets marched on Finland, how the Soviets stamped uh, the Baltic states. You understand? The Soviets were killing left and right through the Europe, from Asia, from the border with Japan all the way to Europe. The Soviets marched on and the only thing they left behind was death, basically. Death and devastation. Whichever opportunity they got, they declared the war on one. It was only in the name of enlarging this Soviet Imperium, which was again just, just the same thing like the case was like this with the Kingdom of the SKS, then also known as Yugoslavia, this was the same, the same, the same shit. In a Soviet Union, the boss was Russian. In a Yugoslavia or Kingdom of the SKS, the boss was a Serb. That's why I said earlier, there are only two, two Slavic ethnicities. One is Russian and another one is a Serb. In the USSR and the Yugoslavia, these were just the trolleys, these were just the carts, these were just the tools for this to ethnicities propel propel itself over all other nations at basically at their expense. Yeah, the same way as it was here. Case with the Black Sea, with the with the with the Caspian Sea, it was the same thing in Yugoslavia. Oh, brother Slovenian, oh, brother Croatian, oh, brother Herzegovian, Bosnian, oh, you all fucking brothers, eh? and Macedonian, and uh, Montenegrin, and everybody, Vojvodina, Hungarian, you all oh, brothers, we are Slavic people, we, solidarity, we help one another, that's it, that's it, man, that's it, and the only thing that happened was this thing, that's, that's the only thing that was left behind, this, this is this is a bones basically ashes and bones this thing here mr stoltenberg i hope that you hear me okay i hope the world hears me about what i'm saying i hope that you know what the holodomor is okay this this is a holodomor this bones this was before the holocaust the holocaust was horrific it was terrible but this stuff here that you see here, this stuff was a hundred times as horrific as a Jewish Holocaust. It's not about whether the Jews are going to recognize Ukrainian people. Their rights is equal. Their status is equal. I'm going to tell you today, straight to them, I'm going to tell you that it was Adolf Hitler who learned from Joseph Stalin. You understand? It was Adolf Hitler who learned from Joseph Stalin. It was not the Hitler who learned from, uh, uh, excuse me, it was, it was, it was, it was Adolf Hitler who learned from Joseph Stalin. It was not Stalin who learned from Adolf Hitler. You, you got to understand. When it comes to Germany, to atrocities which Germans committed in the World War II, and they were atrocities. Make no mistake about this. These extermination camps, as much as they are secured, as much as, as you would imagine, impossible 
the truth would escape out. Germany was located on the European continent. And when all this shit started, the truth somehow, somehow, someway escaped out. These people managed to take the truth out. So I'm telling you, Israel, today, you're going to recognize Ukrainian people, or it's the people of Ukraine who's going to deny you. You're going to recognize them in the same form as you want to be recognized by the people of the world. That I'm telling you, that I'm giving you ultimatum. The truth about these people escaped also out because they had people in the United States of America. The Jewish minority in the United States of America was strong, powerful in Hollywood, throughout the United States. You're talking about industrial people, people who had a strong connection in Britain, in France. So as much as Germans, Nazis did stuff to them, I should say German Nazis did the stuff to them, the truth somehow escaped out. When it comes to the Soviet Union, well, that's a different story. That, from the Soviet Union story, is only the smoke that you see up there. Nobody fucking escaped from here. Nobody escaped from here. From here, there was no escape. There was escape from Auschwitz because of what I stated to you. But there was no escape from here, from this place here. The Ukrainian people were decimated. They were reduced. Half of the territory to what used to be Ukraine, they were decimated. And this decimation, this killing, this starvation, this, this starvation of Ukrainian people, this murder of Ukrainian nation, did not spare the children. Because I'm telling you again, you are guilty because you were born. I hope the American minorities hear what I said. As much as they hated me because of my views, because they couldn't understand my views, because they understood what the separatists mean. They understood the meaning of the Soviet Union, its legacy. But they didn't care. They didn't care just so for as long as it was the whitey that paid the price. Just as long as it was the lighter skin that paid the price, it did not matter to them. Unfortunately, it was others who have seen it the same way. And this is how the war on the people of Ukraine again was born. And in, oh, hey, they contemplated on one since 1995. This is who created Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler was a student of Vladimir Putin. And the operation at no wonder again, the war, the annihilation, the genocide, the ethnic cleansing, yet another Russian war. It's called a military, a special military operation, denazification. The Ukrainian people paid the same fucking price the same price as the Bosnian people have paid. If I go back here to this issue here of Bosnia and Herzegovina, it was exactly this Bosnian people that they did not want to have the war. They just wanted to have peace with everybody. They would not give away this Yugoslavia. They just wanted to uh, a peace with everybody. Uh, Bosnia was a heaven. Also for the Jews. Slovenes, Croats, Serbs, Montenegrins, Kosovo, Macedonian, whoever came to Bosnia was welcome. And they just couldn't get, they just couldn't understand what the fuck went on until the Serbs started to kill there like on a mass scale. It started with exodus, people running all over the place and killing, sniping civilians, children, everything, whatever the fuck you want. Because the goal was simple. Make Serbia bigger. What exactly is the story with the Serbia? I told you about how the Serbs seized the opportunity to reach the Black Sea, 
Caspian Sea. And as you see in 2022, they managed to take most of the coast from the Ukrainian people. Well, the story about the Serbs is the story that you're going to witness again throughout Europe, Mr. Stoltenberg, unless you're going to sober up and do whatever it takes to protect existence of European nations. This war on Ukraine in 2022, this has a very, very strange, similar smell from what used to be exactly the case with the Russians and with the Serbs and Balkans in the past. The most fascinating to me is perhaps this video here I have found. When you have a Serbian Chetnik engaging in a conversation with this uh, black individual from Africa, and uh, this guy from Africa doesn't fucking know anything what what where he is in what he's doing. Uh, he's just he's just um, um, he he was just designated there by the certain governments. I'm going to say probably even foreign governments. They they engage him. They paid him whatever to do his show to do his scenario for the Serbia to to be portrayed as somebody who is just guarding uh, the fundamental rights, basically to to what United Nations have come to, basically terms United Nations is based upon, that so that the World War II would not repeat again, so that the Nazi evil would not repeat. It was a very, very bad mistake that Adolf Hitler did. This purification, uh, this pure Aryan race stuff, uh, it, it just it just turned Hitler into a monster, and believe it or not, Joseph Stalin, who was engaging in hundred times worse stuff than Hitler did, he committed way more crime than what Adolf Hitler did. If that's not bad enough, uh, he he walked away basically without the scratch. Remained as a Soviet president, uh, who actually even had ability to extort, to threaten Finland, uh, Finland. Just as Croatia, this is in Croatia, this war here, this was in, in Croatia, this is here in Croatia. And I have to command to regard. Both, and Serbs and Russians had a principle to accent within USSR, within the Soviet Union, within Yugoslavia, that all federation is based on a brotherhood between the Slavic people. Love and brotherhood in the name of the love and brotherhood and good food. Check this out. <laughs> the Ustasha, Ustasha was a Croat that collaborated with the Nazis in the World War II. Yeah. Uh, Croatia, just like Finland, sided with the Nazi Germany, with the Italy, with the Axis of Evil, against the mighty Soviet Union, just like Finland, after the winter war, the winter war was finished, and Finland had lost considerable amount of territory. Um, Finland decided, just like Croatia, who was also, by the way, completely decimated by the Serbian Union. that to gain the lost territories, even that they didn't really like this idea about the Hitler, they will collaborate it with the Nazi Germany. For the sake of the territories lost, not the Finnish people, not the Croatian people are not part of the Aryan race. None of this are part of any kind of Aryan race. Finnish people trace 
to Asia. These are actually Sami people mixed here with the Swedish, with the Scandinavian people. Um, I don't know really, but this these people are just like a Hungarian people who also come to collaborate with a Hitler. Uh, this you're talking about the Asian people, which semi-Asian people. Now, uh, you know, first of all, much of the European continent is is mixture is mixed. Uh, Hungarian people are greatly mixed with the uh, Slavic people, with the Slovakian, Czech, Polish people, and so on and so forth. And we are with them and so on. This is a European continent uh, mixtures of people that went on back and forth, borders change, and this and that understandable stuff. Yeah, but none of these people really some kind of Aryan people. No, none of these people are some kind of Aryan people really. These people, uh, they would. Maybe be even classified maybe as a Mongoloids or something like that. Mm. Mongoloids was a crazy in expression uh, of Aryan classification for the greater German race, which really didn't have much to do even with the Germany alone. Uh, the biggest problem with the Hitler is... Uh, Racial theory maybe was, and still is, maybe even southern part of Germany, like from Frankfurt down. I don't know how much really German DNA here, the original G German DNA persists here. That's why I was also, I'm very sensitive to these issues because this, this borders keep changing back and forth. Uh, but, but, but what is it exactly compared to the north? Maybe this is like a 50% of what you would get probably here somewhere up north around the Hamburg Hanover area you understand it's not exactly Germany what you might have idea about this Aryan race the thing is that the Joseph Stalin who created Adolf Hitler had a bad plan for entire Europe man this boy had a plan to take down everything he had a fucking plan to take down and Romania and Bulgaria and Hungary and Czech and Poland and fucking everything. He wanted to destroy whatever. It didn't matter to him. Um, the oil fields were producing oil. He had the money. He built tanks. Uh, he was buying the stuff from abroad, even from Americans. Uh, something like very much like Vladimir Putin. He had cash. He had ability. Uh, and he was expanding at expense of the Slavic Brotherhood to whichever direction he wanted. And these guys, these bad boys, had a quite a few things in common. This Slavic Brotherhood was probably sealed in the best way to demonstrate one. Uh, it was inked in a blood uh, agreement between the Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler straight where you see right there in Poland Ribbentrop Molotov plan upon which Russians assassination assassination all the Polish officers uh, Polish Slavic this is supposed to be Slavic but as I told you you know Slavic, this is like a curtain of death, man. This is where you get hugged by your brother, and then the only thing that that is that that happens is just the smoke is coming out of that coat, and uh, you vanish basically in that love, in that, in that, in that hug, you're gone. So this is just did you know who the Croats are? In a little bit, I'm gonna get to this stuff. It's all good, it's stable, there's no, no, there's no problem, it's very good. No problem. No, 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 we don't give, no, no, we don't give, no, we don't give, everything is good, everything is great, everybody, everybody happy, yes, everybody happy, yes, very good, yes, yes, indeed, that's how we do it. There is there is sheep, there is goat. They taste good, yes. Crying a good, Serbia good, yes, yeah, very good. Okay. Uh, since the eighth century, 
Okay? This is all filmed in 1995. Since the 8th century, uh, the settlements of the Serbs are mentioned. Uh, the Serbs came in the area of the Zagreb. Uh, actually, the Serbs came. The Serbs came to 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 Bosanska Krajina. Bosanska Krajina that was basically pretty much the entire Croatia. Um, it was, it was, and in, in a great way, uh, this Bosanska Krajina have moved to the areas where the Serbs never looked, never, never existed really, and have remained up to date over there. And this man is saying that he already doubts about the Croats, that they even originated in Zagreb. Basically, it's saying that they were there before the Croats even appeared in the Zagreb area. Zagreb is a capital of Croatia. If you go to Zagreb, if you go to Croatia, Zagreb is far away from Belgrade. Hey, you can see the Belgrade here, and then you can see the Zagreb, okay? But he is saying that the Serbia, the Serbs, if you remember the map, which I demonstrated you, yeah? They already were all over here. They already, Serbs already had a uh, here, Krajina, everything they already have uh, throughout the Croatia uh, organized. It's going to be a big Serbia, and this guy is saying they were they, they they came here in this areas historically in before the year 800, before even the Croatians settled in Croatia, not only in Croatia but in a capital, which you can see it's completely on the other side away from Serbia, near Slovenia actually. Before even the Croats came to Croatia, before even the Croats came to <laughs> to Zagreb, that's what he is saying. And this is not funny. This is not funny. This is everything but funny. This is our territory. He says, according to this, historically looking, this is all our territory. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, so this is now where the Slavic Brotherhood ends on the Balkan Wars. That's how the Slavic Brotherhood dilemma ended in Croatia. Okay, so the Chetnik says, basically the Chetnik say that there no Croats ever. Serbs were all over Croatia before the Croats came. And what I am going to do, the Serbs says, I'm going to run this Croats all the way to the Adriatic Sea and basically saying they're going to swim all the way to the Italy. That's what this Serbian is saying. You now this is about the Slavic Brotherhood, you know. This is how this Slavic Brotherhood, this Yugoslav Federation, this union that was based on a love, on a harmony, uh, bratstvo in jedinstvo, union, uh, brotherhood and the Union. This is how it all ended. Because the Serbia, Serbia populated much of the Croatia, Bosnia, uh, they moved throughout in the name of the Brotherhood and Union. And it was time to say, fuck you. They pulled out the guns on the table. And it was time to, uh, to pay the bills, basically. It was time to vanish for the Croats, for the Bosnian people. For everybody, basically. So, out of what you see here, it would be a big Serbia. The name Yugoslavia would just change into what would be Serbia, after all. So, the country is it in these federations are basically eaten on an in and out by living on even fucking bones from their hosts. 
Now, what did exactly this guy here that, that that he was saying about that the Serbs came to uh, uh, to the vicinity of the Zagreb city. What exactly was this guy talking about? What, what the hell was this guy talking about? Okay, I'm gonna tell you exactly what he was talking about. You see, this here is Slovenia that you see right there up north. It does not have a border even with the Serbia. It's completely bordering Austria and Italy. What exactly was this guy talking about? What, what the hell did this guy have in his mind? Well, on his mind, um, I don't know, the computer stuck me. Hopefully it's going to be okay. On his mind, On his mind, he had this thing here. This is a little village in Slovenia, um, on the southern part of Slovenia. In fact, my mother is from this area, actually. My my own mother is from this area. It's called Bela Krajina here. And this is pretty close to Zagreb, you know? So this is basically what he had on his mind. This Boyanci, this is like a little... I'm going to tell you, a uh, Serbian settlement since the times of the Ottoman Empire on the Balkans. Okay, a little earlier I told you about these Italians, and I told you about the, uh, the Germans, about the Austrians. I remember how the Kingdom of the SHS and then Federation of the Yugoslav Republic was formed to protect the rights of indigenous people on these territories it's really not complicated folks just bear with me it's really not complicated it really is not complicated it's easy to understand this is an easy thing to understand and next time when somebody tells you something you can either well you can refer him to this video to get an idea Basically, to, if you like, you just give him a taste of the truth. Ah, oh, we're going to see this map. That's all I would like to get, basically, is to get this map. Okay, so we're going to do it like this. And we're going to do it like this. Zoom here. This is the Ottoman Empire, Turkish. Ottoman Empire. Uh, the Ottoman Empire, basically, the Ottoman Empire had Balkans in a big way. Okay, this 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 map is no good. Um, actually, it's really no good. And Ottoman Empire was a really significant power. This was a significant, significant force. Uh, I'm going to tell you not only on the Balkans, uh, but in the world, uh, it was a it was a significant, significant power. And you can see one here. You can see one clearly. You can see one here. This was the most um, historically important time for. I would say for 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 a Turkey. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna try to to accept this to get this map somehow. My goodness, and and, and uh, somehow I cannot get. Okay, so the the best the best the best um, 
the best overview about this 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 empire probably it would probably fit somewhere in a, on a picture that I'm gonna use would be this thing here uh, also I'm gonna tell you that hey, I don't have to accept all the cookies um, and it's why I did got myself this 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 thing here because it's it's just time consuming to go over this stuff and this is like a video that demonstrate how the the borders have changed and I'm gonna help myself and I'm gonna demonstrate you basically what this Ottoman Empire was this Ottoman Empire made Serbia uh, occupied Serbia Balkans but Serbia was like 500 years I think it was a uh, uh, you see this is the Ottoman Empire was part of the okay, we're gonna stop this music it was part of the of the, of the Turkish Empire you understand and so the Serbs didn't like this Ottoman Empire they felt threatened their existence they were not complying with it uh, and it just happened so that because they didn't like this because uh, was this like 16 close to 1700 um, this they ran from Serbia to other parts of the world, of which, of course, those with a Slavic background were of their biggest interest. I'm saying this because today you have a lot of Russians running from uh, Russia. It's a terrible situation, but don't be surprised if something like this repeats to you whether you're in the Baltic states, maybe even in Finland, maybe in Poland, maybe in Romania. Uh, I don't know about the Germany, but you should know that the issue with the Lukashenko resulted with the numerous KGB agents also uh, sent to the West. So there's a tremendous espionage, Russian espionage that's taking place. But the countries that are neighboring Russia and where the significant amount of Russian immigration resulted. You got plenty of countries like this uh, in the area of Kazakhstan and so on. Some of which are actually even happy, I understand, to get this Russian refugees. Russians who declined to fight for the Russia. You should pay attention to this portion of the video. Very, very close attention to this portion of the video. This refugees... Serbian refugees ran from Serbia to the eastern, to the western part of Drina River. They didn't want to be part of the Ottoman Empire. They didn't like it. And so they ran into the area which was under protection of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Austrian-Hungarian Empire, as much as Serbs hated one, as much as everybody hated one, however, provided the refuge for these Serbian refugees. The border, the historical border between the Croats and between the Serbs was set right here. And if I zoom a little further, the river, the name is Drina. This here. It's called Drina. I don't know if there is a map, but this is the river. That pretty much is a big river. And this is the border between, historical border, between the Serbs and between the Croats, because what you see here, Bosnia and Herzegovina, this really was a Croatia. These are Croats. Croats mixed with a Turkish population, uh, because during the Ottoman Empire, this part of Croatia had fallen in the hands of the uh, Ottomans, and along with a religion, they also brought their DNA. They did mix with the locals here, and with the Croats, they established their own, uh, um, you know, government um, through where they, 
governed, um, you know, just like this Ottoman Empire was just a really empire. This was just a giant empire, and they they had they created their subdivision here, and it was this uh, Bosnian, if you want, DNA that was born, and the people accepted the religion as a Muslim religion and so on. But these are really Croat people. And the Serbian people who ran from Serbia to these regions, toward, therefore toward west, from the Turks. They wanted to escape. And boy, they made it all the way here to southern part of Slovenia. Did you see? Where I told you my mother is from. And I give you an example of Boyanci. But the thing is that it was not only about the Boyanci. You know, about the little village, Boyanci. The thing about it is that it was about a much bigger portion of Slovenia at the time in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Always was part of the Austria, which Slovenia had decided um, to help, you know, to help their brother Serbs, because the Slavic Brotherhood. You know, I'm sure you understand that they are going to dedicate to these brothers from the Serbia to spare them of suffering under the Turkish Empire. And they told them, my dear brothers, you, you remember before I told you about the story about Ukrainian people? The same shit. The same shit. My dear Serbian brothers, don't worry Welcome to Slovenia. I tell you what, we're so fucking nice to you. We're going to give you piece of land. And you come here. It's all yours. You can put here your churches, your language, anything you want. Welcome to Slovenia. And this place, the name of this place, it's known as Zumberak. This is the place known as Zumberak. This isn't about Boyanci only. I'm going to demonstrate to you. This is Zumberak. This is not bullshit. This is real, what I'm telling you. Which... However, and it's not about the Zumbarak only, this is, Zumbarak is just a small portion, but this was all the way to Karlovac, all the way to Karlovac, all the way to Karlovac, this was all Slovenia before, in Austro-Hungarian Empire, this was Slovenia before. So they said, man, they said, my dear Serbian brothers and sisters, come here. And you can build yourself and, and anything you want. And uh, they came, they got their folklore. Uh, I don't know if the Serbs did this on their own. Or Slovenian, they gave them help to build their uh, church, their, their, uh, their Orthodox, uh, like a Russian church. Uh, which is all nice. This is all cool. It's, it's all right. Welcome to Slovenia. Don't worry, you find your refuge here, poor you, you know. Welcome, be in peace, enjoy your peace, you know. All good, all good, all good. Except that if I go back to this story about this Chetnik here, that I demonstrated, this dude here. Um, I, I closed one, that video, that video is gone about this, this gentleman who had a different plan for the Croatian people. He was talking about the Croatian people. You see, the thing is that the Serbs who arrived to this most southern part of Slovenia that extended all the way to the city Karlovac today, uh, they figure out that was once the Ottoman Empire was gone, uh, they figure out that they said, you know what? They said, fuck Slovenia. We don't need to be part of Slovenia anymore. This is very nice. They gave us 
their land, their territory, that they allow us their culture, uh, actually our culture and our language on their territory. They, it's very nice, it's very impressive that they were so good, so kind to us. You know, you don't find stupid people like this every fucking day, but uh, in the Slavic Brotherhood, that is a normal thing. Why not? You go and you fucking lay down in a grave so you can accommodate your Slavic brother. That's a normal thing. That's, a, that's, that's what's called solidarity. That's a normal thing. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah? So, they were, they were so nice. I don't know if I'm going to find that video again. Uh, I, I hope that this is the one. They were so nice. They gave them this thing. Everything nice, cool. But the Ottoman Empire was gone. The Turks lost the, the empire on the Balkans. And all of a sudden, uh, 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 like this gentleman decided, said, you know what, fuck you, Slovenia. But, you know, you have a different language right and so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna separate from you and we're gonna become part of croatia okay so now you, you have slovenia lose part of slovenia uh because these people decided they will join uh you know croatia because it's a language they're more close to croatian culture you know and da na 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 you have that song in the name of the Slavic Brotherhood, you know. So they, they, they join Croatia, okay? So then you have a people like a Milan Kuchan in Slovenia, you have people like a Tanya Fajon, you have people like a Bord Pahor. They used to call themselves uh, uh, ex communists of Yugoslavia. Yeah, you know, people like like this. They had very nothing to do. I I, I was gonna say little to do with the communism, but you know, we're talking about this people here, this, this people. And these people said, you know what, you know what, we love you, we're with you. You, you, you go ahead and, and uh, join. Now you go ahead, if you, if you prefer this, join Croatia and take that Slovenian part with you. And... Amen. Uh, a good portion of Slovenia was gone in the hands of the Croatian people. You would love to think Croatia is very close to Slovenian people. The two were part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The two had the same uh, religious views. They share a Roman Catholic uh, faith. But as much as you would love to think, <laughs> you would be mistaken. Uh, this gentleman here pinned this straight uh well, as he said the croats don't even they didn't even fucking exist when the serbs already were here <laughs> you remember no the serbs came here just as i explained to you and during the ethnic cleansing on balkans in 1995 the serbs tells like this tells basically tells you fuck you fact of the matter is the croats did not even exist when we already were in vicinity of the Zagreb. Okay, this here, this Boyanci, Zumberak. Did I tell you Zumberak? This is, this is basically next to this Croatian capital. So you see, this is how you falsify the history and you make one disappear. Just like this. That's exactly what happened to the Ukrainian people. Huh? Zum, Zumberak. Oh shit, look. <laughs> it's it's close to the Zagreb, isn't it? How the hell they got here, right? Maybe the next time when you watch this video here, you can tell the guy how they got here. Okay? This is exactly the same thing that happened. Actually, this is exactly the same fucking thing that's going to happen to you tomorrow in Latvia, Estonia. Actually, you kind of already did. They learned, you know, people in the Baltic states... Uh, Lithuania, Finland and all this, they, they learned the song. They learned the song. Croats learned too. It's just too damn bad that this Hitler philosophy during the World War II was 
directed toward this uh, racial purification issues uh, that were... Yeah, if you ask me, this was really kind of schizophrenic because it did go from one extreme to the other, like across the night. It's like all of a sudden it comes to you, man, they are trying to fucking erase me. And you look at yourself in the mirror and you realize that actually uh, I am you and you are I. And it's the dark feelings that get in your head and you start some kind of theory and it's a fucking madness. And that's exactly what the World War II was about. Um, this is, hmm, how can I say, this is, um, if you ask me, this thing here, it was Vladimir Putin who actually created this um, character here. This is perfect for him, because if you utilize the character like this, not only you will get assistance from entire world on your end for doing something so fucking evil that we see have taken place in Ukraine uh, but even further you're going to go and you're going to divide the world completely you totally divide the world you totally put the world into completely crazy position completely unrealistic position let me tell you again it really was a Joseph Stalin. It really was a Vladimir Putin who created Adolf Hitler. And that's just a matter of fact. That's just a truth. So, ladies and gentlemen, with this in mind, I don't really have much more I would stress to you. I just would want you to sober up whatever the hell you are located at and understand that your future depends I'm not going to say entirely on tomorrow is Ukraine, but the people of Ukraine have exercised their willingness to break free from this madness. By the way, so that I don't forget about this issue here. Croats did manage to, to liberate themselves somehow. They, they did manage to somehow break free from the occupation uh, but the Serbs have through this Slavic Union have left a horrific imprint on the ex-territory of the Yugoslavia horrific um, they set the terms for another war they cleansed Vojvodina. Uh, they set uh, new terms for another war on Balkans, for which they also now heavily campaign on the Balkans. There is a lot of trouble. They do not want to comply with the Kosovo demand. Uh, Kosovo is 94% Albanian. And they refuse use of Kosovo registration uh, tax uh, that's basically a license plates on the vehicles um, they, they they basically refuse to comply their minority refuses to comply recognize Kosovo as independence as independent as a fully sovereign uh, nation state whatever you want to call this they continue to uh, engage in uh, ethnic cleansing against the Bosnian people in the territory of the Bosnia and Herzegovina through the social engineering. They are making situation not going to say close to impossible. I don't even know how the hell is it possible for the Bosnian people to exist like this because of Croatia. And the same, likewise, the situation goes against the uh, Croatian people. And basically, what you see right there, This is what the fuck you get for your Slavic Brotherhood. This thing here. This is what you get. This is how much they expanded, basically. From this thing here, that you see, 
and it was like this and this thing here that you see here this is this is where the Drino River is this from this it grows up through the through the through the brotherhood it go it grows up in the name of the anti-nazism yes because croatia aligned in this madness to free itself from this it grows to you into something like this um with this here basically sort of uh, i'm gonna say freeing itself yeah the cost of a people paid a tremendous cost um they, they 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 paid a tremendous cost but they did manage somehow to break free from this madness i'm gonna say they they did broke free unless it's gonna be the serbs again they're gonna launch uh another special operation on uh people of kosovo you know in the name of denazification and maybe start killing over there uh but you should understand the whole set of nations that had nothing to do with the nazism were decimated in the name of the holy slavic brotherhood they were decimated not in only in the name of the of the so-called denazification but this is actually in the name of war on europe that goes back to a few hundred years this is not new unfortunately this is not new and this stuff is not going to stop this stuff is not going to stop because based on speech of Mr. Stoltenberg today, uh, he warned against uh, underestimating Russian power. Um, I came to conclusion that most likely NATO is not going to parachute on, on a Moscow. And just because of what I stated right now, I am calling you again uh, not only to liberate as much as you can of a territory that is where which people pertain uh, ideologically mentally uh, are willing to not going to say intermingle uh, exchange ideas uh, with European Union members uh, become part of NATO contribute to European security uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this with exactly whatever I stated to you at the beginning of this video uh, what you have seen is nothing else than aggression it is malicious it is what have created Nazism I'm saying to the people of the world Since you're not going to parachute in Moscow, apparently, liberate yourself for the people that are willing to work with you, for the people based on whose stability and security you're going to be judged upon. Do, do the favor yourself as much as you can. That's all I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to go into what, how, this and that. Go ahead and see this video again to get an idea. To get an idea about about what I told you right now. So that you will understand what your job is in this world. I don't think you should be missing on opportunity that I, that I demonstrated you today. Um, as a matter of fact that I mentioned you. in respect to a protest, in respect to uh, demonstrations which took place uh, yesterday in Moscow where the calls even appeared on uh, on how the Washington DC should be just nuked out of existence and so on. Uh, I think you understood my message clearly. Uh, the more you're going to do for yourself together with Ukrainian people, this isn't about Sea of Azov, 
This is about the Black Sea where Russia never was. This is about the Caspian Sea or Lake where Russia never was. This is about history repeating itself and this is about you. I'm telling you, you already should be in there. You should be already protecting not only Ukrainian skies, but sharing ditches with Ukrainian troops for your own sake, for your own future sake, for your own common goals so that you can have a piece of land based on which you're going to continue to build security from within uh, for the literally for the for the sake of the people of this world vladimir putin is a madman this is this is a fascist this is a neo nazi bastard i think you understood clearly what i explained to you today about about how this machinery soviet and yugoslav machinery how they melted people how they melted nations how it all operated how it all operates I don't have anything else to say. There are people who already paid the price in Africa for this bullshit, starved. Uh, you would love to think that he is your ally. You voted for him. You, you lobbied for him. You gave him a green light. Uh, but I'm going to say to you, do you think... You gonna like the Slavic Brotherhood? Do you think that Ukrainian people whom the Russians, Vladimir Putin, have even rated, they have the same DNA? The same DNA. Do you, do you go, you think you're gonna like when they come in your country? When they knock on your door? When you, when you get to share the bread with them? You think you're gonna like this? You think this is something for you? That you're going to like it? If they love Ukrainian people like this, do you think you think they're going to love you too? And what do you think how much they're going to love you when compared to Ukrainian people? They can't stand Ukrainian people. So what the fuck do you base upon your ideas about these Russians about about how they about their whereabouts? What what is your idea based on? What are your dreams based on? You fucking tell me. Today, when you're watching this in Africa, when you're watching this across the Asia, when you're watching this in South America, in Venezuela, in Colombia, where you have these people actually flirting in, 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 in Cuba, in North Korea, with these lunatics from Moscow, with this evil that hunted down in China and everybody in Asia, that they, they ethnically cleansed Japanese minority from those islands and so on but it's all about ethnic cleansing more than is anywhere man these people fucking ethnically clean they would ethnically cleanse anything so you think you're gonna love it when they knock on your door your friends your brothers think about the slavic brotherhood god bless you thanks for watching this video till next time